I have felt something in prayer throughout the day. I've been studying all day and praying and feeling the Lord this afternoon. Acts chapter 13, and we're going to read verses 6 through 12. Acts chapter 13, verses 6 through 12. I think what Bishop said earlier was, was a signal from the Lord, especially when he talked about getting the new people connected to what's going on, to what I'm feeling tonight in the Holy Ghost. Acts 13, verse 6. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, desired to hear the word of God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, which is this bar Jesus, same guy, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went out about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. I want to preach to you tonight kingdom confrontations. Kingdom confrontations. Are you ready to receive what God is about to release in here tonight? Amen. I hope I'm all right in doing this, but if you're between the ages of 13 and 25, would you get on the first couple of rows right now? But if you're between the ages of 13 and 25, would you just join me in the front? Thank you very much. I felt the Lord about six or seven hours ago tell me to do that. He said he would remind me when. He just told me to just now. Praise God. Amen, amen. Everyone say, uh-oh. You may be seated. <laughs> Praise God. I'm moving everybody out. I'm sorry. They all want the front row. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Every miracle, every miracle that God does involves a war of some kind. Every healing, every breakthrough involves a battle. Every person that gets salvation, every time you see someone baptized in Jesus' name or filled with the Holy Ghost, you understand this. There was a war before that baptism, heaven fighting hell for that soul. Before they spoke in tongues, something happened. Every time someone is ready to get baptized, the devil tries something to keep them from getting baptized because it's a battle for the soul. Heaven and hell are constantly warring. Every person on this planet right now, there's a battle for every single one of them, including every single one of you in this building. Amen. Heaven says one thing, hell says the other. Heaven says I'm going to bless you, hell says you're going to die. Heaven says I'm going to come through, hell says it's going to not work out. Heaven says you're going to break through, hell says you're going to break down. Jesus said the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. Heaven says you need to be thankful for what I'm doing. And hell says get bitter at who hurts you. Heaven says it's time to consecrate. And hell says it's time to criticize. Heaven says God's going to make a way. And hell says there's no church. Don't even pray. God doesn't care about what you're going through. It's a war for every blessing, every breakthrough, every miracle. The devil wants you to cry and God wants you to smile. Weeping.
weeping may endure for a night, shut up, but joy cometh in the morning. There's a battle for your family. There's a battle for your situation. There's a battle for the blessing. There's a battle for your mind. There's a battle for your health. Someone ought to shout, Jesus, help me tonight. Help my family. Help my kids. Somebody shout, there's a war going on. And Sergius Paulus, you can be seated, we're going to go deep. Sergius Paulus was this deputy, this lost man, and heaven wanted him, and hell wanted him. And so heaven sent forces, and hell sent forces to the same man at the same time to see what the man would do. Heaven sent an apostle, and hell sent a false prophet. Heaven sent someone using the gifts of the Spirit, and hell sent a sorcerer. Heaven sent someone with the power to set free, and hell sent someone with the power to enslave. Let me say something to the church right now. The person that you're working on, the person you're trying to bring here, there's someone in hell's camp that's working just as hard on them. You can patty cake it, but they're working just as hard as you are to keep them from this building. I felt God tell me that today. Don't just witness and forget about it follow through on who you're trying to save because hell has someone they're using just as hard as heaven's using you yes sir yes sir it's it's a it's a battle it's a war somebody shout i'm important People may think nothing about you, but you're important to heaven and you're important to hell. And so you've got Paul, this great powerful apostle that God anoints to go save this guy. And you've got Bar Jesus or Elamus, the sorcerer who hell anoints to keep this guy in loss and going to hell. And the problem is a lot of times we're trying to win someone to the Lord. We don't know who's working for the other team. Well, I invited them. Why didn't they come? Well, I knocked on their door. They said they'd be here. Well, I texted him. He said he'd come. Well, I'm just going to forget about it. They didn't mean, they're not a man of their word. Wake up. Hell has someone resisting the truth that you're releasing. I'm about to bind some demons that are, you can't even see that are trying to resist the family members in your house and the co-workers and the classmates and the friends and the people you've talked to the people that are being used by the devil to block them i'm telling you the holy ghost god is about to tie up some enemies that are in the way of the harvest being released in this church well i feel prophetic anointing tonight and so Paul would go talk to this guy about the Lord, and then here comes this sorcerer, and he would say, don't go after that. Don't, don't believe him. I remember one time, Bishop, and I won't say the state, I was in a youth camp preaching, and it was tight. I mean, five nights, the f- first four nights, I was like, man, am I in a graveyard? It was just preaching to, to, to statues. These kids wouldn't move. I'd finally get in the altar. I had all kind of demons on them. I'd pray for them. They wouldn't break through. I noticed halfway, halfway through the youth camp, two or three nights in, there was a lady in the back that she just, only word I can think of, if I would describe Jezebel, that would be Jezebel. And I noticed she always worked the altars. I thought maybe she just has a heart for God and whatever, doesn't know anything. But then the fourth night, Bishop, I was laying my hands on a kid praying for God to anoint him and God to use him. And when I walked away, I noticed she would follow me. I, I just happened to turn back. And when I turned back, I heard this lady say, I block everything that preacher's praying over you. I've been doing it all this youth camp. I'm blocking everything he's saying. Oh, yeah. What kind of church do you guys have? And I said, What? And I said, Lord, she's trying to block everything I'm here to do. I want you to block her from coming tomorrow night. 
She smirked at me, but the next night she wasn't there. And we had an explosion, and every kid got delivered in one night. Heaven doesn't want you to be bound. Hell wants to stop you. You've got to make up your mind who's going to win the battle in your house, in your situation. And the Bible said that Paul looked at this sorcerer and set his eyes on him. Sometimes you need to lock eyes with hell and say, I don't know what you're trying to do, but I'm not going to be intimidated. I'm not going to sit back in shame and bow my head to the pressures of the adversary. I am going to speak of, in fact, I rebuke intimidation in this building right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm going to say something and I know no one's going to like it. But when we have outreach every week and you don't show up, but you show up for the parade. Come on, I know the cowards are in here. Because it's easy to walk with a hundred people in a parade. And it's a little harder to knock on a door by yourself. Come on, you've got the Holy Ghost. Stop hiding and masking who you are. You're anointed by God to deliver the drug addict. You're anointed by God to save the alcoholic. You're anointed by God to change the world. Sometimes you have to stare the demons down. I know you're going crazy on my kid right now, but if you think for a split second that I'm going to stop praying because they're acting crazy, you've lost your mind, hell. I'm going to pray till I die for them to be delivered. I will not let a day go by without calling their name out because I am here for war for my family. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, let's go into what Paul said. Acts 13 verse 10. Watch this. It's going to get real deep tonight. It's going to get real deep. Here we go. When he locked eyes with that dude working for hell, first thing he said, oh, full of all subtlety. Subtlety means deceit and guile. He said, you couldn't tell the truth standing on a Bible. You're lying. Everything you say to him is a lie. You're deceiving him with your words. I don't even care about that part. I'm going to leave that alone. And all mischief. Now, Bishop, when I read it, I thought mischief means like troublemaker, stirring the pot. Oh, no. Guess what that word means? To have a lazy love for an effeminate life. He said, you're a closet homosexual. Oh, it's going to get real. He said, you, you have a lazy love for it. In other words, you're not so hardcore against it. Well, yeah, where's the shouters now? Well, he said, I know what you really are. Paul is anointed by God, and hell sends a closet homosexual to bind this man from being set free. And if you, I'm going to say it plain as day, if you get an attitude toward your pastor for what he preached a week and a half ago on Sunday morning, I fear for your soul because it takes a man to stand up and say, I see a spirit. Where this entire church should be on their feet right now. If you're not, something's wrong with you. If you're not supporting the man of God when he stands up to demons, something's not right. Somebody say, preach, pastor, preach, when you want. He will tell you. He will fight for you. That's a spirit. (laughs) He said, I know what you're really doing. I know what you're really doing when no one's around. (laughs) And that spirit... He said, I'm not done. You're a child of the devil, which means in the Greek, you're a pupil of Satan. You're a student. You're literally being taught by the devil. He's training you. Coming to church, worshiping God, being trained by the enemy when no one's around. Oh, his name was Bar Jesus, son of Jesus is what it means. It's amazing. He's got the right name, but he's got the wrong spirit. 
there are people that come to church and act all holy in here. Oh, I wish you would sit tonight. I have not, I'm ready to preach tonight. I'm ready. He said, you're an enemy of all righteousness, which means you oppose everything with integrity, everything that's right in the sight of God. You oppose it. You love fluff, but you hate conviction preaching. Oh, it's quiet. You love blessings and miracles, but you hate it when God says it's time to set your house in order. He said, will you not cease? Will you not stop to pervert the right ways of the Lord? In the Greek, that means to distort, to turn away, to oppose, and to plot against the plans of God. He said, you are plotting against the will of God in someone's life. I had a mother one time when her kids stepped in the baptistry to get baptized in Palm Bay, Florida, 15 years old. He has tears down his face and he steps in the baptistry. And when he stepped in, she ran up behind the baptistry and grabbed his robe and said, you don't deserve to get baptized. You know what you do. It's wrong. Get out of that water and yanked him out and they never saw him again. I'm not working against the church. I'm going to tell you how you work against the church. When you shout in here and blast your pastor at home. I'm in the Holy Ghost tonight, boy. When you show we're having revival. Oh, I'm with you. I'm in it all the way. Then you skip two out of every three services. That's opposing the plan of God. How can I expect my kid to get delivered? How can I expect my spouse to get set free when I'm plotting against the will of God? Somebody shall call it what it is. We want miracles with no judgment. We want apostolic results with charismatic methods. Quiet. Oh, yeah. We want the power, but not the, we want the sinner to be comfortable, not convicted. We, oh, it's quiet. We want the program to overstep and override the power. And if you don't believe it, you should have been here through part of Easter Sunday morning when half the people that go to this church were afraid to worship because the guests were here. Oh, I wish you would sit there right now. Either we're apostolic on Easter or we're not apostolic at all. Either we believe it with everything or we are faking. Somebody ought to praise him right in the devil's face right now. I believe it. I stand for it. I want to live it. We wonder why our churches don't have miracles. But we program everything. You know when Azusa, that hundred years ago happened, and the greatest revival in America took place? You know when it ended? They said in the books it ended when we started programming our services. The Spirit of God that was upon us, that visited us every service, that filled everybody, healed all those blinded eyes, raised the dead, as soon as we started programming when he could move. Oh, it's quiet right now. I'm all for having a plan, but if the plan overrides the Spirit, that's a flesh plan. We need a plan that God releases that no matter what else happens, we will have a move of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. The same God that opens blinded eyes, blinds opened eyes. 
The same God that opens deaf ears can deafen ears that hear. The same God that can raise up the cripple can cripple the one that walks fine. I think we forget his power sometimes. We treat him like Santa. Here's my list of all the things I want. God, bless me, bless me, bless me. And we don't fear him. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He could take the breath out of our body in a second. And we want to sit there and not praise him. Oh, come on, someone. David said everything that's got breath better praise him. Because he's that big. He's that powerful. He's that amazing. He can do anything he wants to do. The same man, Elijah, that looked at that widow woman and said, you're going to have cake in your barrel, your meal in your barrel every day, was looked, at, looked at Jezebel and said, dogs are going to eat you. That same Moses that came and challenged Pharaoh said, let my people go, brought plague power with him, delivered three million people in one night, walked into a Red Sea. They crossed the Red Sea, made a way with the rod that he had, went and prayed and manna fell from heaven, fed the people every day, struck a rock and water came out, wanted people to be so blessed by God. He was so loving, was the meekest man in the world. And then one night he comes down and they're worshiping a golden calf. Would never do that. You would be shocked at the idols people have in their life right now. Oh, I'm going to say something right now, but some of you are more concerned with the words that people post who you follow on social media than you are with the word of God. That's life and judgment and power and authority. Who cares what someone in their living room is trying to tell the world right now? We need people that want to care about what thus saith the Lord. Shot that same man Peter that looked at the lame man and said such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk looked at Ananias a couple chapters later and said you're going to die right now St. Paul, the one on the shipwreck, said, hey, everyone's going to make it. Don't worry about it. Hang on. Be of good cheer. We're going to survive. Looked at this false prophet and said, you are going blind now. Same Jesus that healed everyone in sight. Loved everyone, touched everything, and blessed it. Walked in the house when they were making money and said, you have turned my house of prayer into a den of thieves. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Either we're apostolic or we're not. I said either we're apostolic or we're not. Either we believe it all of our heart. Young people, either you're apostolic here and at school. Don't, you need to be up on your feet, homie. There's either you're apostolic with everyone or you're apostolic with no one. Don't get up here and don't support your youth pastor if you don't really believe it. Come on, I dare you. I'm sick of fraudulent young people that really don't have a backbone to believe the truth. You have been bought with a price. You've been saved by the blood. You have the greatest gift on the planet. If you're an apostolic young person, would you act like you're apostolic? Would you show the enemy, I'm here until God comes back? Why are you preaching so straight? The devil's not afraid to preach this way to you. He'll give you. We got kids that will talk back to their parents, but not talk back to their peers. Oh, I wish you would. I said, we've got kids that will back talk mom and dad every time they give you an order. But every time a friend brings temptation, Come on, they're not your real friend. If they diss your God, if they diss your holiness, 
they're not your real friend. If they diss where you go to church, if they diss your pastor, they're not your real friend. Man, I feel a Holy Ghost anointing on me right now. We serve a holy God, read a holy Bible, have the Holy Ghost, want to live a holy life, but don't like holiness. You know why you're trying to show off that leg? Because you're trying to get the attention of people and not God. God said, be holy for I Oh, it's quiet right now, but I'm here to stir it up in the spirit. Stop being ashamed of who you are and what you've been taught and what God's blessed you with. Someone ought to get with me right now like you never have. You're blessed to be holy. We are holy people. We are sanctified. We are purified. You think, I can't be a witness to the world if I dress holy. I'm ashamed. My wife won the best dressed person of her school and wore a skirt every day. That's cute. My wife had some kind of crazy holiness model agency of Dubai and now Australia following her. So impressed with the clothes she's wearing. You think the world's not watching? They're watching. They're wondering, why are you different from us? You know why? You stand out when you're holy. You're telling hell, I am something that you are not, and I am something that this world needs. Can I get a witness up in here? Men, fellas, Don't act like a preacher in here and a pervert out there. Don't act like you love Jesus in here and you check out everything that moves when you're, I wish you would get a hold of your eyesight. I wish some, don't act all powerful and praise when you can't get yourself in check. Come on guys, it's time for God to control your mind and control your vision. Oh, I, I hear a spirit right there. Where are the men of war in this building right now? You're a man, but you're a man of God. I said you're a man, but you're a man of God. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. Oh, it's a confrontation. It's a battle. And how can you set someone out there free if you've got chains on your own hands? How can I pray someone through if I need to pray through myself? How can I be used at God if I'm the one that needs to be delivered by God? And Paul said, I... That same anointing that's on me to heal people is going to stop you from keeping someone from this house. And he blocked the man with blindness. And the guy he was trying to win was so in awe at the doctrine of the Lord. Oh, stop being ashamed to carry your Bible. Well, I don't want people to think that's what I'm talking about. No, we need a, here's the problem. We've got too many people that want a non-confrontational anointing, a non-confrontational gospel, a non-confrontational preacher, a non-confrontational church. And those same people are non-confrontational to hell at their school, at their job, at their house, in the church. Don't want to upset the devil want all these people to like me. 
Listen to me. I'd rather have every single one of them hating me out there and standing for the truth than have all of them loving me and on my way to hell. Either you're going to believe it and stand up for what's right or you're going to try to blend in with the world. And you just go ask Adam and Eve what blending in will do for you. Stephen said, stone me. Go ahead. I'm going to heaven. You know what Paul did when they, listen to, I've got a picture on my phone of the cell Paul was in the night before he died. And every, they say every two hours they had to change the guards because he was converting them. And the next morning when they went to take him to the execution block, several historians say this, that Paul did not walk to the block. He ran to it. I wish he ran to it. You know why? Because he was so excited about what he had believed. Peter said, crucify me upside down. I'm not even worthy to die like you. We are in a soft generation that has no idea what these people suffered through to give us what we have. You have the greatest treasure on the planet. Don't be ashamed of it. God, baptize this youth group with fire and authority, holiness, righteousness, fervency. Oh, it's thick up here. He caught the rest of my It is time to be a light like never before. It is time to bring your friends from school to this revival. I said it's time to bring your friends to this revival. Some of you have been here eight weeks and I've not witnessed to one classmate yet. And some of you moms and dads are like, wow. And you know what? You haven't talked to your coworkers. You can't reap a harvest that's not in the building. Oh, I'm feeling it right now. You can get mad at me all you want to, but spirits have been stirring for a reason. Hell no, something great is in this atmosphere, and they're trying to war at you personally to keep you from moving corporately with what's going on. It is time, like never before, to raise the sword out and say, we are going to have this revival in our family, in our school, at our job. I don't know. Stand to your feet. I don't know what demon you need to confront. It might just be flesh. It might be laziness. It might be doubt. It might be fear. It might be distraction. I don't know who said it earlier, but it might be a weight or sin that does so easily beset you. But I'm here to tell you as sure as I'm standing here. Hell's working just as hard for the people we're trying to win as heaven is. I had a friend here Sunday morning from the, from the apartments, Daryl. I went to his house yesterday. I took him in my car. I taught him a Bible study for over an hour on baptism in the name of Jesus and the filling of the Holy Ghost. He was critical at first. And all of a sudden he started screaming, I see it. I see it. I see it. I need that Holy Ghost. I need that name of Jesus. Watch this. And I was excited with him. And he said, come, tomorrow, come pick me up. And I'm ready to get baptized tomorrow night. And I drove in the rain early tonight. And I knocked on his door. And he wasn't there. And the Lord said, they're fighting for him. Just as hard as you're fighting for him. How hard are you fighting for him? Oh, it's cute right now. 
but I'm not here for cute church. If we're going to have a cute, I'm out. I want it to be real. Either we're going to bring people or we're not. Either we're going to do everything we can to fill it or we're going to have a cute church. I don't care about you. Churches all over this world have cute church. We need apostolic Holy Ghost. Shake the city. Shake the schoolyard. Shake the school and everything we're near. Revival. I've never taught a Bible study. You're about to teach one this week. Tonight, you ought to get your phone before you get to the house or when you get home, look through there, try to find someone, try to find a friend and text them and say, hey, we should study the Bible tomorrow. And guess what? You got a Bible study. How hard is that? Oh, I see how that six claps and a burp. Preach blessings. Preach financial miracles. What the word prodigal means? We think it means backslider. It means wasteful. There are more prodigals in church than out of church. People wasting the anointing, the services, the breakthroughs, the altar calls, the prayer meetings, and they need another one Sunday morning because they lose it between Wednesday night and Sunday. You know why you lose it? Because you bury it Wednesday night and forget about it. How many times has pastor preached right to you or someone preached this pulpit right to you and you couldn't remember the next day what they preached? And we wonder why we need a, another touch another breakthrough and there's a sinner if i've seen it once it's revived this is not a critique if i've seen it once it's revival. i've seen it a hundred times where sinners are up here praying and altar workers and saints are right beside them and have no clue because they're needing another breakthrough the saint is because they forgot what was preached the night before i'm telling you right now if a, if a guest is in this we ought to be on them like white on rice, baby. And I'm, I'm going to pray this one through. But you know why? Because we get our breakthroughs Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in our prayer closets. And it's fine to have breakthroughs in revival. I want you to. I'm preaching to you tonight. But hell is working overtime to stop things. From exploding and all I hear in heaven is sound the alarm to my people they are in a fight you can't take it lightly well I'll text them next week and see if they want to no text them every day knock on their door call them we could I'm gonna say this very boldly and Bishop can correct me but this house could be filled Sunday if we really want it to be Well, I tried. Well, I called one person. We could fill this house if we wanted to. If, we, if, if, if five people went on a rampage, it would, it would take half the section right here. I mean, if, if, if 30 people in this building between now and Sunday went on a rampage like Philip in Samaria against the gates of hell, I'm going to bring people. I'm going to call people. I'm going to blow people's phones up. I'm going to bother people. I'm going I'm to invite my whole class. You think it's cute? I'm telling you right now, that's where real revival stirs up when the church says we want it like we've never wanted it. I want us to come up here to this altar right now. I feel something specific. I'm confronting. I'm doing your will, God. It's not easy preaching because I love you. I love everybody in here. But I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, spirits are lurking, lurking, fighting behind the scenes. I don't know what you need to wake you up, but whatever it is, let it happen, Jesus, right now. I don't know what situation needs to happen for you to get connected, but whatever it's got to be, let it happen right now. I don't know what person's name needs to cross your mind to get you praying hard, but let it happen right now.
I've come to confront the spirits of this city in the name of Jesus. Something's going to break in here. If it's the last thing we do, something's going to break in here. Would you lift up your hands right now? <laughs> About to release a prayer. And when I'm done releasing it, would you get a, a war cry so loud and so long that the demons fighting you on that Bible study, the demons fighting you at your job, it's your house at your school would hear you and back up right now by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus let there be a kingdom of heaven breakthrough and cause his revival to break loose in this church right now in Jesus name somebody shout Where are you, men of war? Where are you, teenager of fire? Where are you, mom? We need everyone to engage hell and say, I'm going to save somebody. I'm going to reach somebody. Who's your disciple? Who's your Bible study you've got going right now? That's who you're praying for right now. If you don't have one, it's time to pray for a Bible study right now. It's time to pray for God to bring someone in your life. Come on, confront that devil. I bind every spirit, hurting every person you're trying to witness to. I bind every spirit deception and guile. I bind every perverted spirit. I bind every enemy of righteousness, every child of the devil, every pupil of hell working against what you're trying to do for God. In Jesus' name. I tell you in the Holy Ghost, several of you are about to have liberty witnessing like you never have in your entire life. Several of you are about to have conversations with the unexpected one. The one you thought would never be hungry, would never be interested, would never desire, would never come back to holiness, would never come back to the church. Everybody praying for a burden right now. Everybody praying for a Bible study right now. Everybody praying for a disciple right now. Who's the person you're going to win? Who's the person you're going to bring? Who's the person you're going to talk to? You might have to break out of your box. You might have to go on outreach Saturday and find the person. You might have to do outreach yourself tomorrow. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost. You might have to actually go out and do something on your own. But he didn't save us to seat us. He didn't save us to put us in a seat somewhere and take up, take up room. He said, oh, Peter, Satan hath desired to have thee, that I might sift thee as wheat, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail thee not. There's a war going on for every person. Heaven and hell, kingdom war, kingdom confrontation. Oh, 
Shalamata. Hallelujah. You know something? I want you to look up here. I'm going to give this to the bishop. He can do what he wants. And I'm not trying to sing anybody out. But you know, brother, that, my friend Daryl that I'm working on, he told me, he said, Josh, every time I get so low and so depressed lately, Felipe knocks on my door. He said, every time I want to, I can't get away from that church. He said, and when you, he said, I, you don't even know how low I was. And when I came in here Sunday morning, he said, I've never felt love in my entire life like I felt from people in that church when I walked in. He said, even though I'm low right now, lower than anybody, he said, I felt something lift me up. And he said, for the last three days, I've been telling everybody around me, the good news is. He said, I've been telling my friends. I've been, I've been telling people here at the, at the apartments. I've been going to places and applying. I've been telling everybody the good news is the bad. And I'm thinking to myself, this dude hasn't even got the Holy Ghost yet. Hasn't been baptized in Jesus' name. And is out witnessing a lot of us. I'm going to say this right now. There are key people that if we get them here, can get more people here than we can get here. Brother Brewer, there's a lady at one of those apartment complexes named Kenyatta. She runs that whole complex. I mean, when you, when you walk, the guys that have done outreach, you know, everybody that lives there answers to her. Men, women, boys, girls. And he... And last week, was it a week and a half ago? He, we were doing the outreach, and we were about to leave, and Brother Brewer yelled out, I've got to go see her. And he jumped off the bus. We were, we were leaving. Ran up to her, and she looked him in the eye and said, Last night I tried to commit suicide. And he told her, God didn't let you do it. And you know what? She's got so many friends and family. And if, if we get her in that complex, we get the complex. I'm telling you, there are people, there are key people. Like that one preacher years ago that preached that six-week revival in Louisiana or Mississippi, and only one kid got the Holy Ghost. And he was discouraged when he left, and that one kid was J.T. Pugh, one of the greatest preachers that ever lived on this planet, one of the greatest leaders this world ever saw. We have the real thing Let's use it. Let's find someone. There are key people to this revival that are out there right now. They have influence. I speak it now. More doctors are coming. More doctors are going to come. More <laughs> Businessmen are going to come. Politicians are going to come. It's going to reach in the highest systems of the court in this city. In the name of Jesus, let this revival flow like the blood of Jesus flows to every mountain and every valley, every house and every mansion, every apartment, every trailer in this city, every bridge. Would you welcome the bishop right now? Would you thank the Lord for what you have right now? Let's have apostolic revival. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, to hear this kind of preaching, you have to respond. I didn't say you may. I said you have to respond. And you're going to respond only one or a second way. There's only one or two ways. You will either get closer to God and lay aside the weights and sin and lay it down. Some of y'all are down here right now faking it. Some of you are down here right now. You have no intention of telling your lover goodbye. You have no intention of what you're doing in the dark. And no one else knows it. You have no intention. Oh, but you're down here. Oh, you're down here looking the part. But you have no intention of waving goodbye and saying, I'm coming out. And I'm changing. You know what to do because God exposed it tonight through this preacher. 
He don't know. I can come to you right now. And you know I know. Why don't you make up in your mind? If I can come down here and I can act like I'm, why don't I just go the whole way? Why don't I just go the whole way? The Bible said that Jesus spoke these words. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And he said, and then I'll bless you. But the blessing's not coming while you're still out there playing. While you're still out there in the dark. But now you won't come in the light. But you have no intention of going. Why don't you say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm out. Be ye not unequally yoked. Come on, young people. Let me tell you something. Young adults in the uh, exchange, let me tell you. Let me tell you single something. Don't you go out there and marry somebody that don't have the Holy Ghost. Don't you come down here at the front and act like you're all this. And then you're out there flirting and even dating. And some of y'all are committing whoredoms right now. You're living in sin. And boy, you're looking at me right now. Some of y'all are going, I can't believe pastor talking that way. Boy, you better thank God that we had an evangelist. Let me tell you. Before tomorrow night gets here, I ought to get a phone call that says, Pastor, I told him goodbye. I've drawn a line. I'm not going out with him no more. I'm not going to date him no more. Oh, yeah, that's that little golf clap. That's that little just, no. I ought to get a phone call. Saying, Pastor, I'm not dating her no more. All you're doing is playing. Come on. I'm telling you. But, but you want to come down here now and act like, oh, yeah. I'm, and if you want to get mad at me, hey, I've said this for 36 plus years since I've been here. You, can get, you, you get mad at me, you can get glad in the same shoes you got mad in. It ain't going to affect me. It's going to affect you. Come on, for a preacher to come and preach like this, with that kind of anointing, and what are we going to do about it? Come on, young men. Come on, young women. Come on, mamas and daddies. Come on. And pornography? Come on, I'm, I'm going to call it. Hello? You want to come around, boy? Why don't you just man up? Why don't you just woman up and say, uh-uh, I, I'm not doing that. I'm, every time I get tempted, I'm going to go pray. I'm going to go read the Bible. Hello? You're going to let a little cigarette tie you up? Boy, now, mm, it got quiet in here. You're going to let a little marijuana? A little alcohol? A little wine? Now, see, see, we're getting quiet now. Oh, I'm just going to drink a little bit, preacher. Oh, come on. That's like saying, well, I'm just going to commit just a little bit of adultery. You know? I'm just going to fornicate, you know. Come on, where are we? Hey, 
this is our opportunity. This is our chance to reach our city, to reach our, your family, your loved ones. But are we going to be too busy playing? Get mad at the preacher because he said something about cutting hair. Get mad at the preacher because he said something about quit painting your face. Because he said quit wearing all that other. And get mad. Well, go ahead, get mad. But I'm saying there's a time that we're going to be apostolic. If we're going to be apostolic. You want to see the dead raised? You want to see deliverance? Well, that's what it takes. You're not. I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. You won't find this in the Baptist church. You won't find this in the Methodist church. You won't find this in the charismatic church. You won't find this in the Catholic church. But you ought to find it in the apostolic church. You ought to find it in a Pentecostal church. If you want Baptist, go there. If you want We'll just go there. But if you want apostolic, then when this evangelist preaches, my God, come on, break out. Pray through. Pray through. Get right with God. Get right with God. Come on, he's coming back. We're in a race with the rapture. He's coming back. We got to be ready. You gotta quit playing games, holding hands with the world, and can't turn that loose, but yet we try to worship. My God, you ought to listen to this message that he preached over and over and over until you can quote it. See, some of you parents are gonna get upset with me because I got an evangelist in here and we're playing. With your little tea house. We're upsetting it. You got kids coming home trying to be holy. And you're pushing an un unholy lifestyle in your house. And that confuses your kids. They hear the evangelist. They hear the pastor say one thing, but they go, go home and they... Come on, somebody better wake up. Somebody better get up. Somebody got mad at me because I said something about lifestyle and how women should dress and men should dress. And they said, preacher, why don't you just leave that alone? Other churches. I said, and other churches don't have what we have. You won't find this kind of power. You won't find this kind of anointing. Come on, somebody. You don't know where I stand? I'm right here with that evangelist. And you know where you ought to be? You ought to be right there with this evangelist. Come on. Now, I told you before he ever got here, that he's going to lead us in this revival. That we are putting him there. Then what are we doing trying to hold him back? Somebody tell me, I just can't come to church that much. My God, you go to ball games. You go here. You go there. You're playing here. You're doing that. My God, I wish we'd get so on fire for God as we are for everything else. Yeah. 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 Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. Come on, this is not our time to sit around and let some old spirit get on us. This ought to, we ought to be getting in here. Now, I mean that. I ought to be getting phone calls tomorrow that said, Preacher, I'm done. I am sick of it. I want to live for God. I want to live holy. I want to live righteous. And I can't do it going with him or her. Huh. 
Hello? Let me tell you. You know who's are the two most important people that you'll ever have in your life? Not necessarily in this order. Whoever you marry and who is your preacher. Somebody said, well, preacher, why don't you get off that on? Let, let our kids date. Let them, yeah, go out there and date in the world. And you won't see them in church. They won't worship. They won't be in the church. They'll be gone. And their kids, I know it. I've seen it. I'm telling you, you better be careful who you date. Boy, I'm off on it now. I mean, I, I mean I'm on it now. Come on, somebody. You better be careful who you run around with. I wouldn't have a close friend that was influencing me away from God. Hello? Oh, I got friends, but I'm not going to have a friend that's going to be so close to me. He or she is taking me away from God. And you better be careful those that come along. Oh, I'm of God. Yeah, uh uh-huh. But they trying to get you to... You don't have to live that way. That preacher don't know what he's talking about. That's not the word of God. You hear me now. The majority of our church world does not even go by half of the New Testament. They cut it out. They throw it away. They don't and they ignore it. They say it's not for us. Lord have mercy. I'm fired up. I love this kind of preaching. Hallelujah. Are y'all hearing me? Are we going to be apostolic? Well, then let's be apostolic. Let's roll up our... Now, I lo- don't go out here and say I don't love people. I'll show you how much I love people. I'll come slap you so hard. Oh, but I'll do it in love. <laughs> no, I won't. You know I won't. Have I slapped anybody here? Don't you raise your hand. I'll come slap you. (laughs) Some of y'all been slapped. My God. I'm mad at the devil. I'm mad at that stupid spirit that you are allowing to get you all messed up. Now, let me show you a sure sign, and I got to let you go. When you can't worship. When you just sit through church. When you don't. And when you start going against the preacher. You're in trouble. Now I'm not saying that because I'm the preacher. So y'all better shake hands with that evangelist. And you better pray for him. Because hell can't stand him. Hell can't stand his family. Hell is upset. Hell is angry. Hell has dispatched messengers to come against them. I prayed for them today. And I said, Lord, I want everything hell has sent their way. I want them to be met by angels, warrior angels of God. That will put them on the run. I want everything to break open for them. Are y'all hearing me? I need you praying that way. I need you believing God that way. And I wouldn't miss Saturday night for nothing. All right? Someone shout yeah. Yeah. Come on, shout yeah. yeah. You ought to have five people you touch tomorrow to be in church Saturday or Sunday. There there ought to be five people you touch tomorrow. Friday, there ought to be five more. Saturday, there should be five more. All you got to do is just say, hey, let's study the Bible together. 
Amen. I love that. Wasn't that awesome? You can teach that Bible study. Lord, have mercy. Just say, hey, I need you to come go to church with me. Well, where do you go? Man, I go that apostolic. I go that Pentecostal church. Oh, what kind of church is that? Oh, man, that's a church that you need to be in. It's that church you missed. Hello? So come on. I'll be waiting on your phone call tomorrow. I'd love it if you called me tonight. I'm done. I'm out with it. I'm going to be on fire for God. I'm putting God first. I'm laying aside the weight and the sin. And I'm running right. All you guys. All you gals. Be careful. Who you give your heart to. All right. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for this evangelist and this mighty message that we heard tonight. Kingdom confrontations. Help us, oh God, to give our strength to the angel that is fighting to get his message through to us. Help us, oh God, to be all that you have declared we can be. God, help us not to abort what you have for us. God, help us to be strong in the Lord and the power of your might. Put on the whole armor of God that we can be strong. And the power of the enemy. Bless now, I pray, oh God. I pray for the Herring family. Anoint them with power. Keep them, oh Lord. Open up doors. Strengthen them, oh Lord. Satan, you're a liar. You cannot. You will not. It's over. There's victory. Somebody shout yes. yes. I pray for this church right now, Lord. For these young adults. For these young people. For mamas and daddies and grandparents and children. I pray right now that they would be with fire and a fervency and a hunger for righteousness and truth. And Lord, a righteousness that where we got to tell somebody. We got to talk to somebody. We got to live right. Talk right. Speak right. Bring somebody to church in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. All right. If you walk out of here and somebody starts yaying about, you ought to just say, you better jump back, Cracker Jack. That's my evangelist. That's my preacher. That's my church. That's my God. That's my life. I don't even want to hear it. Go in Jesus' name. I love you.